In this video, I want to introduce the concept of mobile first data journalism and how that should form an important role in the way that you approach data journalism projects. Specifically, I want to talk about how um, you can design for a mobile experience and how that's separate to the technical considerations of responsive design, design that responds to the user's device. And I'm also going to introduce some useful frameworks and libraries that can be used to do a lot of the legwork when it comes to responsive and mobile first uh, design. So let's start by looking at some examples of what I mean by responsive design. This is uh, a long form feature by the New York Times about the effects of global warming on Greenland. And this is what the site looks like on desktop. We've got a nice landscape image going across the screen. The, the title takes up a nice amount of space at the top. But if you look at the same story on mobile, you'll notice some key differences. First of all, the title is now obviously no longer spread across. It's a smaller font and the video doesn't actually automatically play. We have a play button here which gives the user a choice. Now the obvious reason for that is that a video takes up a lot of bandwidth and if you're on a mobile phone you might not want to be spending your data on loading this what's essentially a background image, a nice piece of illustration. When you go further into the article, it will behave in a different way on mobile to the way that it behaves on desktop. Um, when, uh, as you scroll down, a square appears on the screen on a map to help explain the concept that's being talked about in the article itself. And it's well worth exploring this article yourself on a desktop and on a mobile device to see how it behaves differently. Here's another example. This is a particularly good example of mobile first data journalism design. This is a story from uh, Tampa Bay and I'll just load it in a separate window so you can see what I mean because at the moment I'm on desktop and you'll see that even on desktop this looks mobile. Uh, it's very much designed in a, a way that isn't inherently desktop focused and we're clicking to advance through this story rather than scrolling. And that difference between the click and the scroll is quite an important one. Yes, you can scroll on a mobile phone, but actually, if you, particularly if you think of platforms like Snapchat and Instagram, the, the tap to advance is becoming a particularly common way of navigating through a story. And this very much is a tap to advance way of telling a story. So in this case we, we, we're taking mobile navigation conventions and bringing them onto desktop rather than adapting it necessarily. This is mobile first and to some extent mobile only. Notice on the right hand side as well these small circles that indicate your place in the story which are also replicated on desktop. Sometimes a mobile user needs to be presented with a completely different view to the uh, interface that a desktop user will get. This is an example of a piece of data journalism around the American election. And on the left, you can see the view that is given to the user if they're on desktop, which is a map of the country and how that's looking politically. On the right, you can see the same story, the same page, and what it looks like on mobile. You can see it's a completely different page. Instead of a map, there's no map at all. And instead, we have essentially a, a kind of a stacked bar chart from left to right with uh, how, how the, the two candidates are doing and some key states that are being shown uh, underneath that. The uh, New York Times graphics editor, Gregor Aish, puts this uh, quite succinctly with is a kind of a new mantra for mobile first design when it comes to data journalism. Now, um, there's a, a very famous mantra in design which it goes along the lines of overview first, zoom and filter, then details on demand. And that's often the kind of mantra that, that you follow when you're doing visualization, particularly around mapping. But what Gregor says is a kind of a, a twist on that phrase, which is the idea that details first, 
no zoom and filter overview on desktop only so this is the idea that actually instead of details being something that you get on demand and overview being what you get by default on a mobile phone you haven't got the space for an overview and maps in particular don't tend to work very well on mobile so you want to go straight to the details without any ability to zoom and filter on mobile phone it's a good illustration of how even you know kind of rules of design can be revisited and rethought um, and redesigned when it comes to new user experiences like mobile and it, it's worth highlighting that so far we've talked about responsive design and, and the behavior of these stories but considering the user is a really key part of this um, the mobile user is often different to the desktop user not just in a technical sense in terms of the amount of screen that they have available and the device that they're using but also in the sort of ways that they behave the sort of things that they want to do someone who's on a mobile phone may well be more likely to be looking up information they might be um, urgently trying to get some information they might be more locally focused than someone who's at a desktop machine equally they may be more likely to be bored and, and playing around exploring something uh, compared to someone who's in the office and has a specific task People on mobile may be checking in or doing some sort of micro-tasking. That's something else that's quite common in mobile user behaviour. Or they might be editing something, making an urgent change to something uh, on the move. So considering these user behaviours, it, it can be quite useful in thinking about the user experience and not just the technical design. Likewise, you can uh, think about the fact that they're using their fingers to, to navigate the material rather than a mouse. The fact that they may be distracted so your design might need to be more obvious, more quick than it would be if someone was in a desktop scenario. And you can take advantage of the fact that they're on a mobile phone. You might tap into the geolocation functionality of the phone or some of the sensors that are on the phone around uh, movement and things like that. You can replicate what a page looks like on mobile by um, using the inspector in developer tools. This is um, particularly useful. If I show you an example, this is, um, this is an FT story. I'm just going to resize my browser so you can see. And in fact, as I resize it, you're going to see it redraw. Um, so in fact, I'm going to stretch back out again so you can see if i right click on anywhere on this browser this is chrome and you should be able to do something similar on firefox you should get the option to inspect this page and what will happen and i'm just going to move my browser again so you can see and put it back is that down here you'll get uh, what's called the inspector so this area down here with elements console and so on this is called the inspector and it's often used to kind of check web pages and, and debug them and it's quite useful for things like scraping. But one of the things you can do is over here is a little icon that is basically a mobile phone and a bigger screen. Um, and if you click on that, it will toggle the view. It will show you what this looks like in a mobile phone and you can see that you can change the resolution uh, we can change the zoom here as well we can change different types of mobiles as well um, so this is quite useful and you'll notice that instead of my uh, mouse clicker icon I've now got what's essentially a finger a, a touch point so I can negotiate navigate this story as it looks on mobile and you'll notice on mobile that the map stays at the top and the article is scrolled through underneath so it does look different on desktop so that's the inspector the other thing you can do if i switch back on um on a browser is if you shrink the size of a window you'll see how the page behaves so that you'll see as I get to this point 
the page redraws so that the map is now at the top and again the story is underneath and this time as I scroll through the story this map changes in response to that behavior. So that's kind of what it would look like on a tablet. If I go further it's going to split into two columns now and behave differently on this size of device. So that is a is a useful technique to know uh, both using the inspector and resizing the browser window to see what a story is going to look like on a mobile phone. You can also use uh, responsive browsers. There's one in particular called Blisk which essentially emulates how um, the web page that you're looking at will look like in a different mobile phone and in this case there are lots of different models of phone you can select to see how it looks. So if you are working a lot in responsive or you want to see what your stories look like on uh, different mobile phones then Blisk is worth downloading and, and using to test particular pages and stories. Now when it comes to designing for mobile uh, consumption of a story there are broadly speaking two approaches. One is called progressive enhancement. This is the idea that you start with a mobile design and then add to it for other platforms like tablets and desktop. And the second approach uh, is called graceful degradation. This is the idea that you start from the full featured desktop version and then strip away different parts of it to create tablet and mobile versions. Historically, the graceful degradation approach was much more popular, but in recent years, um, in fact, not even that recently, the progressive enhancement approach has become uh, much more common and, and pretty uh, widespread. Uh, UXPIN have a, a good, a, a useful approach in this respect. They list eight steps to take when designing a mobile first design and um, they recommend starting with uh, mobile first. Uh, but the first step even before all of that is to make an inventory of all the content in your page or in this case in your story and then to establish a hierarchy. So what they're recommending is identifying the most important elements of your content, of your story, and make sure that they work on mobile. And the third point there, the smallest breakpoints first, what this means is that start with the smallest resolution, the mobile phone resolution of your story, that version of your story. Now, um, the breakpoints are basically, if I go back to this again, um, and I go right back to here. So this is the smallest breakpoint as I move up. This is another breakpoint. So the breakpoint is the point at which it switches from one layout essentially to another. So at, at some width it's doing that. And if I carry on again, here's another breakpoint where it changes once more. So those are breakpoints. And you want the smallest one first to start with that. They recommend enlarging touch targets. So again, we're thinking about designing for the finger, not the mouse. To not rely on hovers. People don't hover on different parts of um, the page on mobile. You can't hover in the same way that you can on desktop. And of course, a lot of data visualization relies on hovers. So it's worth considering if that's a factor in your story. They then recommend thinking about your design as an app. And so it, it, in the same way that apps use expandable menus, things like that, you might design in that sort of way. To avoid very large graphics that are designed for desktop and finally to test in a real device so not necessarily just the emulators that I mentioned earlier. Now of course this is not um, assuming that you're going to be overseeing the whole design process. This is about a broader literacy in terms of mobile first design and some issues that you need to consider as a data journalist who might be involved in a broader process. So let's move on to responsive design and, and how that works on a technical level. Uh, first of all, before I do that, it's worth mentioning that there's a um, guide on the GitHub repo that talks a bit more about these principles and explains what we mean by responsive design and mobile UX. So it's uh, worth reading that in a bit more detail if you want to refresh yourself on some of these concepts. But this is how it works. Um, 
we have here three different devices at the bottom, a mobile uh, device, a tablet and a desktop. Um, when they access the HTML web page, there is a, a CSS file, a cascading style sheet file, which decides how that HTML content is going to be presented. And what it does as part of that decision is it detects the, the size of the screen um, or the type of the device that's being used to view the content. And depending on the size of that screen, it will style the HTML content in different ways. And one of the most basic ways it will style it is it will decide what width the content is going to occupy. Um, and it will make some other decisions that I'll, I'll mention as well. So depending on that, it will serve up a mobile site, a tablet site, or a desktop site, all based on the same content, but different styles. And the code to do that will look something like this. Um, without getting into too much detail, what we've got here is an at media, which basically um, handles the type of the type of media that uh, medium that's being used to access it, and it's specifying a range of screen width. So it's basically saying any screen between 401 pixels wide and 960 pixels wide, if the device is between those widths, if those, if the screen is, then it's going to apply the styles that follow. And so in this case, there's just one style. It is styling the body tag in the HTML and it's giving it a background color of yellow. So it's not particularly relevant to mobile design, but that's just a very simple illustration of how it works. Check how wide the screen is. If it's between this, these dimensions, then apply this style. And then more broadly, you might have a style sheet that, that starts to look something like this. You've got a section that specifies if the screen is less than 400, make it red. Uh, if it's between 401 and 960, make it yellow. If it's more than 961, um, then make it blue. And obviously you would expand, or someone would expand this code to apply uh, much more complex styles depending on each of these conditions. But essentially you've got three different conditions for three different um, screen width possibilities and then a different style applied depending on each of those. You also have different responsive design patterns, different ways in which the page is drawn depending on the width of the screen. Um, in this mostly fluid example here, you've got, uh, you can see on the desktop, you've got these three elements, different shades of green. As the screen shrinks, those elements then get pushed down and then dropped underneath one another eventually at the thinnest width. In this example, we have three columns and a column is dropped off. So this one's dropped down and then the next one's dropped down and then they are made narrower and so on. And there are a number of different approaches nicely summed up in these diagrams here. And you can see that the FT example that I showed earlier, this one's quite an interesting example of this, where essentially the content is pushed up um, or, or dropped, sorry, this is dropped under the other content. And then as you get even more narrow, it goes back to the side. So it's um, quite a, a unique approach there. You can also have uh, different types of zoom, whether people can zoom or not, or if uh, the content is essentially stretched to the screen. And you can serve different images as well. Um, obviously, one key difference between desktop and mobile is that desktop is landscape orientation and mobile is vertical orientation portrait. So uh, images won't necessarily be appropriate for both devices. Uh, it's not uncommon to have multiple images or multiple versions of the same image that are served up uh, depend in different ways depending on the device that's being used to access it. So you might have a piece of HTML that looks something like this where um, one image, so we've got photo big here which is served up if the um, if, uh, if the screen is a certain width and if it's a different width then this photo tall is served up and then we've also got um, photo small here as well. And then finally we've got responsive libraries. So these are the frameworks I mentioned earlier. This is uh, These are collections of code that are 
written in a way to help you be responsive. Table saw, for example, is a, a JavaScript library which allows you to um, create tables which are responsive. So that's a, a relatively brief introduction to mobile first data journalism, the role of responsive design and the role of mobile UX. Um, the key points to take away from this, first of all, remember that you're not just designing for mobile devices, but actually the people who use those and the different contexts in which they're using them. Um, for example, the fact that they have fat fingers is a classic example of that, but also they may be distracted, they may be more uh, information seeking than someone on desktop, they may be more distracted. So think about that in the way that you design your stories and any interactivity or visualization. Secondly, remember that there is a lot of code out here to help you. There's a lot of responsive frameworks, libraries, where essentially the code has been written and you can adapt it to your purposes. Uh, Bootstrap is a really good example of this for creating responsive web pages. And uh, there's a guide on GitHub to creating a web page using Bootstrap. And finally, more than anything else, test your work, test your stories, your visualizations in particular, using the inspector, using the emulators, or simply by resizing your browser window. Um, if you have created a visualization for a story and it doesn't work on mobile, then consider a different approach. You can find further reading about these subjects, about these issues, at the links uh, here. So uh, anything about responsive will be tagged on my pinboard bookmarks um, with the tag responsive. And you'll find some readings and links on Moodle and GitHub as well.